Hi everyone. In this particular lecture, I'll take you through a very, very quick revision of your topic one that relates to the basic economic problem of scarcity. And what is this problem of scarcity? It relates to the limited resources in relation to unlimited ones. Needs are not unlimited, but the wants are essentially because we keep desiring more and more and that's what makes the wants unlimited. Necessities are like, you know, your basic need of your food, clothing and shelter. But beyond that is all wants and that's what makes the resources limited. And in economics, how are these resources classified? These resources are classified into four broad categories, land, capital, labor and enterprise. Land relates to all natural resources. Capital relates to all man-made resources for the purpose of production and exchange. Labor, any human effort, mental or physical, relating to the production and exchange again. For the purpose of production and exchange, it is all labor. Enterprise organizes, combines in all the resources, initiates the process of production, takes the risk. Thinking of these, Within your classroom setup, possibly, you can think of the water and the air that you, you have is all land. The building that you're sitting in, the classroom, your smart board to whiteboards to pens, everything is a part of capital in there because there is production process taking place in your classroom. Labor is your teacher and enterprise is the school or the organization you're studying in. Yep. And what are the rewards for these? Resources, which are also called the factors of production, rent for land, interest for capital, wages or salaries for labor, and enterprise gets the profit. Now, because these resources are limited as an individual or as an economy, end of the day, it leads us to the problem of choices because you want to make the most efficient use of these resources to be able to satisfy maximum wants. And thus, the, the problem of choices, the very first question that comes is, what? What do I produce with the resources that I have? Every economy has the same question. How to produce relates to the process. And for whom to produce is relating to the distribution theory. So the problem of choices are what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce, which every nation decides on. What to produce relates to the capital goods or consumer goods or public goods or merit goods, what type of goods or services should the economy produce? Should it produce the producer goods as in the capital goods or should it produce the consumer goods for the end user or should it produce the public goods that are for free, non-rivalrous and non-excludable? Likewise, every economy has to decide on the process as to what resources should it use more. Yeah, so should it have more of labor intensive techniques or land intensive or capital intensive? Meaning, what resource do we need to use more to do the production? And for whom to produce relates to the theory of distribution. Whatever we are producing in the first place, does it have an equitable distribution? Do we produce more of luxury goods or necessities? So, these problems of choices are answered by different economies, and as they are answered, decides on their economic system. So if it's all being the answers to these questions are by the command of the government, if government decides what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce, we call it a planned economic system. If the market forces of demand and supply answer these questions, we call it a free market economic system. And if an economy has a mix of both, as in a part of it is being decided by the government and a part of it is being divided, decided by the buyers and the sellers in an economy, we call it a mixed economic system. Most of the economies are mixed economies now. And then, when you make these, when you, when you face these problems of choices, you have to engage in a rational decision making. Rational decision making basically means you compare your costs and benefits. The word marginal means additional. In economics we focus more on marginal analysis. That is we compare what is my additional cost, what's my additional benefit of taking that decision. And you take that decision as long as you get the benefit equal to your cost. Best part, you engage in this decision making process practically every single minute. 
And that's where I always say you all live economics every minute. Yes, you did have the limitation of the time in the morning when you were facing the problem of scarcity and you decided to go for your lecture, but you did have a problem of choice at that point in time. The very first one was, do I get up, do I get out of the bed or no? That was also a problem of choice there. Do I eat this? Or do I eat that? Do I, you know, choose this dress or that? So this is all every time you're facing these problems of choices and each time you face this problem of choice, you think prudently, you think rationally and you make a decision. And when you make a decision, because it's a case of choices, choices is between two or more variables. In other words, when you're choosing between two, you naturally land up giving up. Give up. So if you choose to come to the lecture or the very first one, let's take the example. If you decided to get out of the bed, you did give up. What did you give up? It was the sleep. So in those lines, if I had to put it up, likewise, the economy. The economy has limited resources. And with those limited resources, let's say if the economy decides to produce more of capital goods, it has to produce less of consumer goods or public goods. That's the way you look at it. And that's what, what you give up is your opportunity cost. The next best choice given up is called opportunity cost, as in opportunity lost. We'll discuss the production possibility curve in the next lecture.